Hey everybody, it's Mark Buchanan here from practicalize.net and welcome to Presentation DNA, an occasional series where we're going to be exploring the essence of good presentation. In this episode, we're looking at the use of pictures, a really important part of presenting well. And this was inspired by a presentation that I sat through um, a few weeks ago. And here's a mock-up of the first slide that the presenter threw up on the screen. Now, have a look at this. What's the first thing that hits you? Well, I'll tell you what hits me straight away. It's this. These are the dreaded jaggies. Okay? And this is a dead giveaway for the fact that the resolution of the picture that is used is way too small for the size that he's using the picture at. If you expand a picture too far, you pull the pixels that make it so far apart that they just can't resolve nice, fine edges. And that's what we're seeing here. So let me just jump out of presentation mode, um, click on that. And in good presenter mode, here's one I prepared earlier. Now let's go back into presentation mode. I've got the exact same picture, but at a much higher resolution. Look how beautiful that is now. You can see all the fine edges, lots of resolution there. We can really see what the picture is supposed to be about. And that leads me on to point number two is why did he use that particular picture? So his title is getting the most out of your people. He's got that up here nice and big. So what's the connection between getting the most out of your people and a picture of Mount Fuji with this lenticular cloud on the top of it? So that's the second thing that you need to ask yourself about pictures. Once you've decided on the resolution you need and got a good enough picture for that, then why is it that particular picture and not some other picture? So the picture should help you get your point across. A picture is worth a thousand words if it's the right picture. And if it's the wrong picture, you just get a thousand words of criticism afterwards. So you don't want that, do you? So maybe there was, in his mind, some connection between a picture of Mount Fuji and getting the most out of your people. But to be honest, I couldn't really see what the connection was. So the acid test in choosing a picture is, if I took all the text off and I actually didn't say anything for a while and just let my audience stare at the picture, would it give them at least some clue as to what it was that I was about to tell them or what the purpose of the presentation was? If the answer to that is yes, then great, you've got a good picture choice. But if actually it doesn't help them at all in terms of working out what it is that you're trying to say, it's the wrong picture. So be really careful about your pictures and don't just put them up there because you like them or it's your favorite. They've got to get some meaning across to your audience. So from now on, let's just assume that is the perfect picture to symbolize the title. OK, and then we'll see what else we can do with our pictures. So I'm coming out of presentation mode again, and you'll notice this is the Apple Keynote interface. So if you're not using Keynote, this will look unfamiliar to you. But all the things that I'm going to show you can be done in Microsoft PowerPoint. You'll just use different keystrokes to get the effects that I'm going to show you. So the next thing that's bothering me about this slide is he's got too much text over the top of the picture. And people regularly do this, but it kind of takes away the point of having a picture if you're then going to plaster text all over it. And actually, what it's making my brain try and do is I'm trying to resolve the picture on the back layer, and then I'm trying to resolve the text on the front layer, and my brain is trying to decode all this scrambled information. And that's just going to make me a little bit stressed, and it's going to make me a lot less able to concentrate on what the presenter is saying. So be really careful about how much text you put on a picture, and be really careful where you put the text if you've really got to have some. So I can kind of live with the title. The subtitle we've got to have somewhere, somehow, but this next bit is really just getting lost in the picture. So for the time being, I'm just going to take that completely away. I really think that needs to go on a separate slide, so we'll forget it for now. So I'm going to move the subtitle as well, and we'll come back to that if I can find it on this white background. But let's have a look at the main title here, Getting the Most Out of Your People. It's kind of working. I like the fact that it's white and there's the clouds that are white. There's a certain harmony about that. But we could make it pop a little bit more, maybe sit up in front of the picture. And the easiest way for me to do that is to highlight this. And again, bearing in mind in PowerPoint, you'll go for different menu options. But basically, I'm just going to put a drop shadow. If I toggle that on and off, can you see how that's giving you a bit of a black uh, shadow behind the text? So I've used black because it's a nice stark contrast with white. If you look over here, I'm only using 75% opacity. So actually 75% black is more like a gray. And you can just see we've got a bit of a gray thing happening up there in the color wheel. 
Two other things that are interesting are we've got an offset of six pixels. What that means is the, the white text has been copied and then it's been turned to 75% black, which is a gray. And then it's been offset by six points, six pixels, so that you can see it alongside the bottom right of each letter. The reason it's on the bottom right is because I've got an angle setting here of 315 degrees. So what I've really said to the program is, look, the light is coming from the top left, so the shadow should therefore be at the bottom right. So I'm trying to make the origin of the light on the photograph and the origin of the light illuminating the text and causing that shadow to be coming from the exact same point. It just makes it look harmonious. The second thing I've done is I've blurred it. It's got a 10 pixel blur. If I remove this blur, you'll see that the black uh, shadow, actually, especially if I go down instead of up, see how the black behind the uh, text is starting to get really sharp edged. Almost looks like it's been sign written now, doesn't it? That's a bit too hard edged for me, and that's why I've put a blur on there, just so you can see that there's a shadow, but it's not too harsh or stark. Now, I'm going to try something a little bit different. Why don't I just drag this down here? I'm going to take this picture and make it a little bit smaller, because actually I think it's taking up too much of the slide. Let's do something like that, where it's about half the slide. And I'm going to lift it up. Um, can you see there, that's halfway. I'm going to go above the halfway just to make it pleasing. I'm going to drop this text down and I'm going to make it smaller. It's 62 points at the moment. So let's go for, say, a 48. And hopefully, if I come outwards on the text box, I'm going to try and get this onto one line of text. I think we might have a hard return. So... Yeah, we need to come a bit further out. You notice we've got a drop shadow on this text as well, which is making it stand off the grey background. Right, so there I've got one line. I'm just going to centre that up. And then if I can find it, remember we hid this other text? Let's see if we can bring that up, just nesting it in slightly. I'm going to give that a shadow in exactly the same way so it jumps off. And let's have a look at that as a composition now. So can you see now that the first thing that you're seeing is the photograph. I'm going to give them enough time in my presentation to drink it in, just to absorb it, enjoy it. Then we come down to what's this about? It's about getting the most out of your people. We've got the strap line. It's nesting nicely underneath the main line of text. And the whole composition just looks a little bit more pleasing, in my opinion. Now, it's not rules we're talking about here. It's principles, so you're free to disagree with me if you want. Just do a couple more things. I could put a shadow on, and if I quickly present that, see how that stands up off the background a little bit more now? And the other thing I could do, in PowerPoint, you could put a white rectangle behind it and make it look like a picture frame. In Keynote, I've got picture frames already built in. And see how now it's just looking that little bit more interesting, and we've got a really pleasing composition. There's enough grey around everything, like a frame on a picture. You would never just blue tack a photograph onto a wall, you would always frame it. So frame your pictures with your uh, presentation slides and try and make the shape of the text and the photo and their proportions on the slide look pleasing to you, because if they're pleasing to you, they may well be pleasing to your audience. So let's just quickly summarise. Number one, make sure you've got enough resolution in your pictures that you can get them big enough without the jaggies. Make sure the pictures you've chosen are actually relevant to your subject and they actually say something. Don't overwhelm them with text, that just spoils the effect. If you must put some text on, make sure it's in a plain area, like the sky in our picture. And then look at each slide and compose it as though it's a work of art. So I hope you found this helpful. Thanks ever so much for watching. Do keep coming back because I'll put more up from time to time on this YouTube channel. And check me out on the website if you want to find uh, some more about what I can do and what I might be able to help you with. Thanks ever so much for your time. Bye-bye.